Hello and welcome to one of the shortest tutorial to learn about classes. In this session, we're looking at introduction to classes and objects in Java. Object-oriented programming is centered on creating objects rather than procedures. Object-oriented programming combines data and behavior via encapsulation. Encapsulation in Java is a mechanism of wrapping variables and methods together as a single unit. Data in an object are known as fields. Procedures in an object are known as methods or functions. Usually the variable of a class are set as privates. And then we have public setter and getter methods to modify and view the values of the variables. Data hiding is an important concept in Java. It is the ability of an object to hide data from other objects in the program. And that's because only an object's method should be able to directly manipulate its data. So we have been talking about object, but what is class? What does object have to do anything with class? In a way, a class is a blueprint that objects may be created from. Please note that a class is not an object, but can definitely be a description of an object. An object that is created from a class is called an instance of a class. For example, when we hear the word car, we immediately think about a box-like transportation machine with certain properties in an abstract form. The car class defines the fields and methods that will exist in all objects that are an instance of the car class. For example, a Toyota, or a Tesla, or a Honda. You may wonder why classes are important in object-oriented programming. Well, it's important to note that classes are used to create and manage new objects, and they support inheritance, which is a key ingredient in object-oriented design and programming. Classes are a great mechanism for reusing codes. Now that we understand what classes are, let's build a class called Rectangle from a unified modeling language, aka UML diagram. The following is a UML diagram of a rectangle class. As you may already know, a UML diagram is a standard way to visualize the design of our programs, which you can easily translate into an object-oriented language such as Java. For the purpose of this section, let's look at this UML diagram for a rectangle class. In this class, we're calculating the area of rectangle. The first part of the UML diagram is the class name, followed by the fields, which are usually set as private, followed by our method or functions that are public. Usually the access modifiers are denoted as plus for public and minus for private. Variable types are placed after the variable name, separated by a colon. Method parameters are shown inside the parentheses using the same notation as variables. Method return types are placed after the method declaration name separated by a colon. And now that we know the components, let's translate this UML diagram into a class file. As you notice, the name of the class file that we have over here is rectangle, so we have public class rectangle. Moving on to our fields, which are private width and private length, the type is double in both of them. And then the final part of it is our method, which are public. We have our setters and getters. If you look at it, we have public void set width and set length. And then we have our getters, which are get width and get length. A couple of the slides ago, we talked about the setter and getter. And then finally, we're calculating the area of our rectangle, which we have our public double get area. This is the method that calculates the area of rectangle. We have transferred our class to Dr. Java, and now we will test our class in main. By the way, I added this constructor. If you don't add a constructor, the Java compiler will create a default constructor. So our main will start with public class rectangle demo. You can call it whatever you want as long as it matches your file name. And then as usual, our main function is public static void main string args. And now we're going to create a rectangle object, which is the instance of a class rectangle. In doing so, we will write down the class name, which was rectangle, and now we will have to give it a name. I'm going to call it the box. You can call it anything you want as long as it's not a Java keyword or it follow, and it follows the syntax rules. So this will equal to new rectangle, and now 
we have to pass two arguments to constructor, one for the link and one for the width. We have now successfully created box object and it is considered an instance of the rectangle class. The rest of the program are simple print statements to print the length and the width of the box as well as the area of the box. Notice, when trying to get the length and the width, we're calling our getters by using our new object's name, which is box, dot, and then the name of the function that was in our rectangle class. Now let's run this program. Before we run this program, there, I, I just ran the program, but before you run this program, you should check to make sure that both the rectangle class and the main program, rectangle demo, are in the same folder and directory. Otherwise, they won't be able to communicate. So here is the output. You can take a look at the output, and these are the information of our box. This will conclude our fast and quick introduction to classes and objects in Java. I hope this video helped you understand the concept of the classes and objects a little better.